Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic with me, Grey Hunter. Where last time we saved Bastila and we found out that we might just have the ability to become a Jedi someday. Karth, why are we not driving? Why are we not on our road trip already? So Bastila looks concerned, totally. How can I help? Let's see what's happening. You look like you want to talk to me because you are a non-playable character, but you are part of my party. I would like to know what happened after you crashed on Taurus. I'm curious well, as to what you and Karth were doing before we all joined forces. Well, I was out for a couple of days because I had these totally weird dreams, and it had nothing to do with drugs. Don't even suggest it. Um, but yeah, you mean before we were- I managed to free myself, as I recall. In yes. fact, if I hadn't been there, Brezhik and his thugs might have killed you in that fight. It's probably more accurate to say that I rescued you. I wouldn't say more accurate, but you know, I will admit that they were fist fighting and I am not a fist fighter, but I will remind you that you didn't escape until I got there. I'll admit that I probably wouldn't have been able to free myself if not for the brawl after the swoop race. Exactly. I guess I should thank you for that at least. Actually, your presence at the swoop track is what I'm curious about. It couldn't have been an easy task to find me there. Yet somehow you managed. You also I'm a very talented detection individual. by the Sith, discovered I was a Volker prisoner, gained sponsorship for the race, and became the Tara Swoop champion. That's quite a resume. Yes, yes it is. Yes it is. So how about we just, you know, agree that I rescued you and you rescued me. It's a mutual rescue thing. It's, it looks very good for everybody. But, you know, we can't, we can't resist getting in this jibe. Damsel in distress. Yes. Well, I hardly consider myself a damsel in distress. I'm a member of the Jedi Order, after all. You didn't have your lights at all. you've impressed me with what you've done. When you were chosen to join this mission, I doubt any of us expected this much from you. A Jedi could have done such things, of course. But only Wait by drawing heavily upon the Force. This is going back to what you said before, right? The Force is in all of us. Though for most people, it's barely a measurable whisper. But there are some individuals outside the Jedi Order that we consider Force-sensitive. It's obvious to I me see. that the Force has been working through you. There is no other explanation for your great success. Though I'm not certain what Luck. to make of this discovery. Perhaps if you weren't... Well, if you were younger, the Jedi might take you for training. But as it is... I'm too old? That's interesting. So what are you trying to say, exactly? I've overstepped my authority. I'm speaking of things that are best left to the Jedi Council. For now, I see. It's just accept the fact that you're gifted. Hopefully, between your abilities, my Jedi training, and the skills of our companions, we can find a way off this planet. Yes, I hope we can find a way off this planet. I love Jennifer Hale. She's so good. She's a brilliant actress. All right, let's upgrade our cool stuff. So we'll have a look at this. Even though we can't upgrade Bastos' lightsaber right now, it's still nice that we can eventually. So, you need a specific feat to use it, therefore we can't because we're not a Jedi. But uh, you can also put in power crystals, so these will give benefits like uh, an extra chance to stun, or damage against droids, or... Uh, in, I can't remember if it's limited to the second game, but some of them will help with blaster bolt deflection, etc, etc. You can also change the color if you so desire and you have the crystals that are of the appropriate color for you. There's a lot more colors in KOTOR 2, but I think there's actually some mods out there for KOTOR 1 that increase how many different color variations there are. I don't think I have any installed, but I may. So if we see any weird colored lightsabers, that will be the reason. I will upgrade Bendax Blaster, just to finish that off. And I don't think we have anything else in the way of melee things. No, we do not. And we already upgraded our armor. Cool. So, let's get off this planet. Throw down a quick save. And go. And we'll bring Karth and Bastila, because they are my favorite team for Taris. Karth is very good at the whole tanking thing, and Bastila is pretty good too. Uh, I have learned not to disclose this information to just anybody. No, uh, you have me confused. Oh, I see. I see. That's uh, awkward. Karth, get rid of me. I'm going to have to capture 
Oh, Kandra sent you. Well, that's okay. He's Dabek's Mandalorian guy, right? Yeah, exactly. See? Uh, thank you for the message. We will go meet him. We need a drink. Yeah, doesn't surprise me, really. They're very grumpy, those Mandalorians. Dunira nu prata dunko sercha doma doma. Doma doma indeed, as you say, sir, as you say. What can I now, do? Bastila has a few levels to take, so we'll do that, and then we will give out equipment. So we're going to put her first attribute point into dexterity. She's a Jedi Sentinel, so they get a few more skill points than uh, the other Jedi types do. But she's got a very low intelligence score, so she doesn't get a whole lot. But that's not really her forte anyway. Her main role is to be a uh, a support kind of character, I suppose you'd call it. She's basically going to be fighting in hand-to-hand, -hand, but also casting these cool powers. So uh, the way the powers work, because you've got light side and dark side powers, and a couple that are universal, I believe. Yeah, there we go. There's one that's universal. Uh, if you are dark side and you want to use light side powers, it costs you more force points. If you are light side and want to use dark side powers, it costs you more force points. There you go. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, if you're neutral, I think you just get a, an increase to cost for both. But you'll very rarely be neutral because uh, unlike in KOTOR 2, there's not really a way to kind of balance out your light side dealings with your dark side. You, KOTOR 1's main failing in regards to light versus dark side is that it's very it's very black and white. There's <laughs> you're either a real ass and a dark sider, or you are literally Robin Hood. But um in terms of powers to take, we are going to take shock because the game will usually recommend that you take Stum Droid, which is a nice power, but uh force shock and force lightning rather, is very, very good because it is useful against both uh, robots, droids, and living enemies. So very multi-purpose, it's very good. And it also has the ability when you get to Force Storm to jump from enemy to enemy, I do believe. Unless that's just in KOTOR 2. Uh, Maybe it is in KOTOR 2. No, okay, yeah. It's not actually jumping from enemy to enemy. It's everyone around you. So, very, very good. So, we'll grab that. And we'll accept that. She has another level to take. And we'll throw both her points into treat injury. Powers. She can't have healing yet, so we will get that soon. And... Now I think we'll take Force Valor, because that's actually kind of useful. I don't know if she'll use it herself. We might have to go and set her AI behavior to be uh, mainly Jedi support, but we'll sort it out. Also, each Jedi class gets a specific feat set. So for Sentinels, it's immunity to fear, stun, and paralysis, which is very good because there are a lot of things that do all of those. It's bad if you get stunned in combat, as we learned from Karth being put out of action because we threw a grenade at him. Uh, Night Sense is universal to Jedi, so we'll just go down here. Uh, it's basically just their awareness of the world. It's a nice little power, it's a nice little touch. It gives them extra defense and it's always active. So it's a passive ability that never gets turned off. If you want to get uh, the top level, you have to be a level 12 Jedi. There's only 20 levels in the game, so that means you have to not... Uh, you, you have to avoid going above level 8 before you become a Jedi, which is, I don't think, possible to do without a lot of gamey, uh, very, very gamey tactics. But, um, yeah, as I said, Force Immunity to Fear and Stun, and finally Paralysis for the Jedi Sentinel. The Consular, I can't remember what their ability is. Um, I believe... Also, oh, we'll take improved two weapon fighting because she has a two handed weapon, so you know, very useful. Um, I believe that theirs is something to do with their ability to cast force powers, and the Jedi Guardian's power is an increase. 
No, it's not an increase. It's a the ability to force jump. That's it. And you can have a cardio regulator. We did pick up everything from Brezhik. So we're going to put on his gloves for ourselves. Take his armband for in case we get into fisticuffs. And I think Karth will take Brezhik's belt because that's good against people hitting him very hard in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So that should be good. We'll give Bastler an energy shield as well, just to be sure. I don't know if she'll actually use it, which could be a problem. So no, I don't want messages. I want... Where is it? Scripts, there it is. So I don't want to select me, I want to select Bastila. So default attack. Yes. Grenadier, no. Oh, I see, we have to select one of them. So we'll go with that. And Karth is fine the way he is. So we'll throw down a quick save here because we've done one. all that stuff. Yes. And let's head to the bar because we have business. We want to get off this dirt pile. Yes, I am back again. I just want to check that you haven't got anything good. That you haven't been holding out on me, old buddy, old pal. Nope, you don't have any weapon mods and you don't have anything that I particularly want. So, we will carry on. And out we go. Now, there should be a conversation between Karth and Bastila soon enough. I'm not sure exactly when that will trigger. It triggers after you've been with them for a little bit, so it might count time that you're doing inventory and such. We'll get a message soon. And we'll get stuck on an invisible wall, because yay! She doesn't actually have anything else different to sell to us, so we're going to ignore her. And we're going to head straight on over to these guys. Also, we're going to buy that Pazark deck from the old man. We haven't collected that yet. I like how she's just casually carrying a lightsaber past the Sith Guard, and he's just like, yep, yeah, business as usual. Hello, sir. Pretty soon, all of Terrace will be talking about how you beat Bendik in that fight, stranger. You're hmm. famous now, but that's not necessarily a good thing. The more You're right. well-known you are, the more chance the Sith will take an interest in you. And nobody wants that kind of attention. It occurs to me that this old man might just be the smartest person on this entire rock. It, it really does. Um, I would like to know who you My are. My name's Garouk. I used to be a card shark. One of the best Pazak players in the Outer Rim. I but see. that was before I retired from the gambling life. But why? Why are you giving up gambling, Don't good sir? Don't get me wrong. The game's been good to me over the years. I've traveled the span of the galaxy, from the core worlds oh, to the he's far a reaches gambling. of the Outer Rim. I've won countless fortunes, and lost countless more. But that was long ago. Things have changed. Gambling is a young man's game. That's why I'm Fair looking enough. to get out. Fair enough. My offer still stands. Fifty credits get you my old Pazak deck, and a free lesson. A great offer if you can afford it. I can. I have a ton of money, so sure, I'll buy you. You're interested in the grand old game. The rules are pretty simple. Here, I'll load them up into your data pad so you can check them out anytime you want. Good luck. I hope the game's as good to you as it was to me. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? Nah, I'm good. I already know how to play Pazak. No, of course. So this will give me something to do while Kos no flying sense the ship. A youngster like you wasting your days away with an old man in a dingy bar. But if you ever want to chat, you know where to find me. It's not you, old man. I actually like you. I actually do like him. He's he's pretty down to earth. This kind of guy, this Garuk. But uh, we have pressing business with this man over here. Hey, Candorus. I saw you in the swoop race. Very impressive. You seem like you know how to get results. That's yes. just the kind of person I'm looking for. I see. And uh, what is it exactly that you want? My name's Candorus Ordo. I work for Davik Kang in the exchange. The hours aren't great, but they promised me a fortune to work for them. And I have nothing That's better nice. to do. Mandalorian <laughs> Murphs like me. I was bored. But lately, Davik hasn't been paying me what he promised. I don't like getting I see. cheated. 
So I figure it's time for me to break the Sith quarantine and get off this backwater planet. I like this guy. He has the plan. So how do you plan to do that? I've got a plan to escape Taurus, but I can't do it alone. I need someone I know can get the job done to help me. That's I see. You, you have a question. Careful. Mercs like this having a lick of conscience. They'll betray you in a heartbeat. This could be a trap. I ain't you think everything's you. a trap. I'm talking to your friend, aren't I? I saw you win that swoop race and started thinking. Anyone crazy enough to race like that is probably crazy enough to break into the Sith military base. I need Maybe. someone to steal the Sith launch codes from the base. Without those codes, any ship leaving the atmosphere will be disintegrated by the Sith fleet's automated defense guns. I see. You're right. That is kind of a hitch. And we don't even have a ship yet. But I take it that you will have a plan for that. So, uh... He wants us to steal these codes. Karth is being paranoid because he doesn't trust anybody. What is in this for me? Because, you know, he has a point. Here's the deal. You bring me those launch codes, and I can provide the vehicle to get us off the planet. Davik's ah. flagship, the Ebon Hawk. I see. So, I bring you the codes, and you have a ship. I like this. Um, alright, well, how am I supposed to get in there? Getting in won't be easy. The Sith base is protected by an encrypted security system. It would take okay. a top-of-the-line astromech droid to slice through it. Lucky for would you, you know I where know we can just get one? the place to get ah. a droid like that. Davik was having one custom built by Janice Nall. Just tell her Kandoris sent you, and she'll sell you the droid. Then you can use it to get the launch codes from the Sith base. Okay, but what won't Davik get a little bit pissy? Davik paid for the droid, but I'm the guy he put in charge of the mission. He won't care okay, how I cool. come up with those Just checking, because, you know, Normally angry I do this myself, but everyone knows who I work for. If I broke into the Sith base, they'd send an army down on Davik's estate to get those codes back. That's why I need you. No, no, it makes sense. You need a proxy. You got yourself a deal, good sir. I don't sense any deception from him, which is surprising. This may be exactly what we need. I'm going to wait in Javiar's cantina. You come and find me when you've got those launch codes, and I'll make sure we both get off this rock. I like the way you think, Candorous. So yeah, Bastila can sense people's intentions. Whether or not she's accurate is something to be questioned. But so far, so good. So we'll throw down another quick save. And let's take a look at our map. So we need to go to Droids by Janus, which means we need to go to the upper city. So this way. Uh, how are we doing for medical supplies? We've got plenty. Uh, we need to worry a bit less about med packs now because we have Bastila along and she's got force heal, so she can, you know, just be like, hey, I use the force and I heal you, and then dice roll, boom, done. You are healed. She's like Jesus. Jedi, I like Jesus. You heard it here first. Bastila, I was wondering something. Ah! How did those Vulcans manage to capture a famous Jedi? Were you not that is a good question. But crashed? No, I was conscious. But my force powers were exhausted from using my battle meditation. So you needed a nap. Without my help, you might have never gotten off the ship alive. You needed a nana nap. I see you Jedi in action. There's, there's no way those thugs could have stood a chance against your lightsaber. My lightsaber was misplaced. Huh. I couldn't find it after the crash. I looked everywhere in that pot. The Vulcas came and overwhelmed me, even as I was searching for my weapon. Where? I see. You, you lost, lost it. Your lightsaber. <laughs> I mean, isn't that a violation of some kind of Jedi code or something? You know, <laughs> I love the all the responses for this particular one. You you can be a little bit defensive and tell him to leave her alone, which kind of makes sense. Or you can tease her and you know, in, in one of two ways. You can pick on her for you know, for being forgetful or. It's brilliant. I love these conversations. This is why Bioware does such great RPGs. So we'll pick number one because that's funny. This is no laughing matter. During the crash, my lightsaber must have it must have fallen from my belt and rolled under my seat. Excuses, the excuses. Found it there when they searched the wreckage. Hey, hey, hey! Don't get mad. I'm sorry. It's just funny to think of a legendary it is pretty funny. losing her lightsaber. Take my advice. This is one detail. Yeah, I wouldn't write about it. A legend, Karth. Though I will consider your advice when I relate these events to the Jedi Council. There is no need for them to know every detail of what transpired. It's not technically lying. I mean, you know, I lost my lightsaber versus 
I was tired from using my force abilities a lot, and then people were like, hey, we capture you. Sounds a lot better, doesn't it? Then, oops, I lost my Lassel, lightsaber. Did you ever think about joining all the Jedi who were running off to follow the Karth, why? That was nearly five years ago. I was still an apprentice. My battle meditation hadn't even manifested itself. Yet even then, I had the wisdom to obey the will of the Council. Unlike Revan. I guess. Still, do you ever wonder if things could have been different? Or would Revan and Malak still have been corrupted if the Council had supported them instead of dragging its feet? It's a good you question. Blame Revan's corruption on the Council. Your Republic saw only the threat of the Mandalorians, but the wisdom Isn't it of the our Republic? saw beyond the immediate threat. I see. And uh, what is exactly, well, you know, what what did they see? Explain. There was something lurking out there, something that devoured Revan and Malak and many other Jedi. Had the Council sent us all into the unknown, how many more would have fallen? Are you sure they weren't so just lucky? We should have done nothing. Just let the Mandalorians conquer us on a post. Exactly. I mean, the Republic was under attack, and the Order abandoned us. We did not abandon you. You kind of did. The Council were not about to throw lives away foolishly. In time, we would have aided you against the Mandalorians, but you couldn't wait. Oh, I'm Rather sorry. Malik offered a quick <laughs> answer, and the Republic chose to walk the easy path rather than the path of wisdom. Now we see the results all around us. You asked me if I think things could have been different. I know they could have. If Revan had only listened to the Council, millions of innocent people would still be alive. Yeah, right. And every single one of them would be speaking in the I, I think we're done. Let's just get back to the cast. So, I like two things about that conversation. The first being that Bastila pretty much goes, you know, the Republic should have just gone, excuse me Mandalorians, but we're not quite ready for this fight yet. We have to wait for the Jedi to be, you know, all in on this. So that, that's the first thing that I find funny. The second is that Karth is so, like, he's pretty much the player character right there. He's just like, seriously, you, you expect that nothing would have been different that everything would have just been fine. I'm sorry, but if the Republic didn't fight, the Mandalorians would have won. He did. This is why I like Karth as opposed to Caden, because Karth channels the player character so well. Hey, Janice. We're here to buy droid. Kunshi <laughs> Chingpala niska mule or doon rata tigin po drunko. I see. Search a doma wana kunda tama. And a very fine establishment it is. Tigin po rank thong. Mule ra on shanturing um ni patoga wanga chon zi tse. Ika krotu haku jije. It's because they're not very open minded yet. They're just, you know, they're really, really bad. So, um, Kandra said that you had a droid. Look how dang ya foki. Chachiska do punta kakaspaka. Two thousand. But no oto. But that would only make me break even. So, you can say sure, you can say I can't afford that, or you can try to persuade her. Persuading her by telling her that Davik will close the shop down permanently gets you dark side points, but she does give you the droid. Instead, we're going to go for number two, because it's not that bad. And 2,000 credits is kind of outrageous. <laughs> Bugra shock kunti chi fifteen hundred is much more reasonable. Dong a book shami no knock. Dong. Tinku kappa, topa no aska, chi nisko ne akava abaka. Awesome. So T3 M4 is basically our R2D2. Uh, we will swap out Karth for a minute and add him in. Yes, this is the party configuration that I desire, and we will go to T3 and auto level him because it doesn't really make much of a difference. You won't have. You won't be taking him that many places. So we'll leave him in charge of the party for a moment while we head over to the Sith base. So we'll throw down another quick save and head over to the base. So you can. Uh, use T3 inside the base if you want to, but you only need him to open the door. Like, once you're inside, you don't need him anymore, so we're just going to get him to open the door, and then we're going to swap Karth back into the party, because we will need Karth's uh, fighting expertise for this next bit. I do like Taris. I mean, it looks a lot more spiffy because of the mod that I'm using that does uh, redone textures, 
But even in the original game, this was amazing back in the day. Like, it looked so good. Alright, T3, do your business. Good job, dude. Well done. And now you get to leave the party because I do not need you. I need my friend Karth. It would be wonderful if I could select the right thing. There we go. Karth. Back in the party. Let's go. Kavadumpa Kapalia Monapata. A restricted area. Yin kin kun no ba mule rachi kun. Don't do that. There's a completely valid reason for me to be here. Uh, I I am here for a meeting. Puna na bon sha. Kava dumpa kupaliaya mokai pata. Kakin cha na kwat na bon kon. Wana kumbes. Chi pala mulek. Tonki pa na nonek. Tu nik ton chu chun ki nemolek. I'd really prefer it if you didn't do that. Okay, tell you what, I will give you 50 bucks if you don't push the button. Awesome. 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 Cool. Alright, awesome. So, uh, yeah, I've never, even when I've put all my points into, um, into Persuade and not held back my levels deliberately, I've never been able to get her to not fail that first Persuade check. You always have to give her money. I'm not sure if that's just the way it's meant to be or what. It seems a little weird that you can't persuade her. So she's left, so we can access her reception terminal, and we will use one of our computer spikes to open the system. Now let's have a look at our security cameras, see what we got. Ooh, we have some droids and such. Let's go back to the root menu. What about the secondary barracks? Ah, there we've got a power conduit, so overload that. Easy fix. Let's return to menu. We are in reception. What about medical? Nothing good in there. The control center. Nothing good in there. The elevator. Ah. So there's an assault droid in there. So we can disable its shield. We can open the elevator. Let's just disable its shield. Because that will make it a lot easier once we have to fight the damn thing. And we'll return to the menu again. What about the armory? Anything good in there? Nothing good in there. And we'll return to the root menu. What about system commands? Hack the sentry droids target filtering? You know, I have never done that, but we don't actually have enough, uh, enough spikes left over. So we'll just log out. And we will go open this door. Hello, sir! No, I want to target you. Shoot him! Oh god, they threw grenades. Oh. Shoot them in the everything! Oh, nice. So yeah, once you have a Jedi on the team, fights are so much more satisfying. There's a data pad. I don't believe that has anything relevant on it, but let's have a quick look, show new items. D for datapad. Seems to be an activity log for the day. Of interest is the following entry. The power conduit we installed in the elevator seems to have solved the shield outage problem. Intriguing. Alright, well, let's continue on. Why is there a... Why is there a gun just randomly sitting here? I do not know. Hello, we've arrived at medical. Shoot the droid. Shoot it. Shoot it in the everything. Take ah, everything. Oh dear. Good job, that's one. Good save. And she has yes. a new level. So let's level her up to level 7. We'll let it do the recommended stuff. Actually, no we won't. We'll put it into treat injury. And then for her, her power for this level, 
there's really nothing good. Um, what level do you need to be for this? Level 12. Level 6, what about that? Level 9. Force shield is actually not the worst idea, so we'll go with that. I'll accept.